Betaflight 4.2 is almost here. And if you watched my video about five things in Betaflight 4.2 that will surprise you, you know that Betaflight has a new form of rate calculation. What's the big deal with the new actual rates in Betaflight 4.2? Why did they feel the need to replace the rate system that we already have? And if you decide to use the new rate system, how do you figure out what your new rates should be? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. What you're looking at right now is my actual rates that I fly on almost all of my freestyle quads. Uh, and I want to use these to demonstrate what's wrong with the current way that Betaflight calculates rates. If you understand how it works, you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. But the problem with the Betaflight rates is that they don't really reflect how most people think about configuring their rates. The way that most people think about configuring their rates is that there's going to be a sort of a center stick region. And you can see the 3D model moving here in the configurator. We'll do a little picture in picture thing or something. There's a center stick region where you're kind of moving the stick not very far from center to make sort of precise movements, right? Just normal flying. And then there is a full stick region whoop, where you'll do flips and rolls. And you basically want to configure those things separately. You want to be able to say, here's how twitchy or, or soft I want my center stick to be. Here's how fast I want my full stick to be. And then here's the sort of curve, how sharp I want the curve in between those three things. Now with the default beta flight rates, that is really complicated to figure out because if I change the RC rate parameter, what I want you to see is that it changes the entire curve. As I raise the RC rate, the center gets faster and more twitchy and the full stick deflection gets faster at the same time. If I change the S rate parameter, it mostly affects the full stick deflection. And you can see here that for the most part, the red line overlaps the other two lines, but then at somewhere over about 50% stick travel, zoop, it shoots up sharply. So there is a way to change the full stick deflection amount without changing the center stick very much, but there isn't a way to do the opposite. And if you want to adjust the curve, you can use RC Expo to either flatten out or make the curve steeper. But confusingly, S rate also affects the curve. So if I change the S rate, it's also going to change my curve. And it just everything is interlinked. That's the takeaway. Everything's interlinked. The way that they interact is confusing, and it's just all bleh. With actual rates, the center sensitivity and the full stick deflection are configured separately and independently. So if I know that I want a full stick deflection of about 900 degrees per second, and I, I like sensor sen sensitivity around 200, then that's all I got to do. If I take those numbers and I go fly and I feel like I want my flips and rolls to be faster, I just come back and I raise the max rate to, oh, uh, you know, like 1100. But my center sensitivity stays about the same. That's the beauty of this. You can adjust these things independently. You can also adjust the expo parameter to change the steepness of the curve. So if I kind of like where the center is, and I like where the full stick is, but I would like just a little sharper definition between them, then I can change the expo. I can raise or lower the expo to make that curve steeper. And I guess that's one place where these, these are interrelated because as you raise the expo, you can see that the center kind of flattens out and gets a little wider. But other than that, they're mostly independent. So the next question you're probably gonna ask is, how do I convert my beta flight rates over to the new rates if I wanna try them out? And the answer is this little calculator here. There's a link in the video description. I actually don't know who made it or who to attribute it to, but it lets you put in your beta flight rates and then tweak the actual rates to figure out what the closest parameter is. So my beta flight RC rate is 1.27. So let's just dial in 1.27. My S rate is 0 0.72 and my expo is 0 0.40. And now I can play with the actual rates. And what let's do is let's start by setting the max rate equal to my max rate, which I believe is 9, 10 degrees per second. But I'll just dial it up until they overlap. There we go. And then I'm going to try changing the center rate. And I'm going to try and get these two dotted lines to overlap. 
All right. And then I'm going to just tweak the expo to try to get them as close as possible to each other. Pretty close. Well, I can't get them to quite overlap. Pretty close, but they're not perfectly overlapping. They're pretty damn close, though. Oh, my Betaflight Expo should be 0 0.40. There we go. Oh, yeah, it's pretty freaking close. Now, if all you want to do is just keep your rates exactly the same and never change them, there's no reason to convert from beta flight rates to actual rates. The power of actual rates is that if you still are tweaking your rates, you haven't sort of locked in on the exact right rates for you, actual rates make it easier to tweak the parameters independently and find out what works best. And even for somebody who's been flying as long as me, I'm still tweaking my rates. For example, in the last year, I've come down from 1100 degrees per second max rate all the way down to about 900 degrees. And if I could have done that without changing my center stick sensitivity at all, I probably would have. Each time I did it, I had to readjust my center stick sensitivity as well as my timing on fast flips and rolls, and it made it a little harder to do. Now, under actual rates, I don't have to do that. I would be able to adjust them independently. That's going to do it for this video about Betaflight actual rates. This is part of a playlist of a whole bunch, hopefully, a whole bunch of videos to make about the new stuff in Betaflight 4.2. There's a link to that playlist down in the video description. Early on, there will only be one or two videos, but hopefully you'll come back and check that playlist as more videos come out to see more of my content about the new cool stuff in Betaflight 4.2, culminating eventually in actually flying it, which I'm probably going to wait for the official release to like know how does it fly but that's gonna do it for this video thank you so much for watching happy flying